as I travel solo through India, a land of endless diversity and sensory experiences, where each destination offers its own unique adventure. Today we find ourselves in Hampi. Let's discover what wonders this quarter of India holds for us. Welcome to Hampi. So right now we are just having a food stop. So in a food stop, some of this, uh, which I think is like Manchurian, I'm not sure what, not sure what it is, anyway. Maybe mushroom or cauliflower, I'm not sure. But it's like pink stuff. Pink stuff, pink stuff. Or red stuff. Just give me a vegetable. Um, and a couple of chapatis as well. Just having a snack. This is like the, the scene we've got. There's some temples here. Now uh, what we're going to do is go back down there. So I've just been past a couple of the other temples. Uh, one is Karni, Karnini, I think. Push Karnini, which is just down there. There's also Krishna temple and Ugra Narasimha. So those three we're going to see in this vlog. I just needed a break because it's really hot. It's like, I don't know, 35. Let's, let's double, double check. 30, 35 feels like 35 apparently, according to AccuWeather. Oh, look. Then we've got a friend coming over here. Who's that guy? How are we doing? Wow, look at those, just the, wow. <laughs> Alright guys, this is what we got. So we got a couple of chapatis here. Uh, a bit of like, I think, kind of cabbage-y, turmeric -y. Mm, I'm not sure what those seeds are. Gotta find out. Maybe mustard, mustard seeds or aniseed, aniseed seeds. And some, I think, Manchurian... I don't know. Check it out. These are really good. I'm kind of like, it's actually quite sweet. It's got like a sweet kind of batter on. I kind of think of maybe like you know, Japanese tempura, but like slightly sweetened and a bit more, a bit more spice to it. Awesome. Let me try the little. Curry here. Mm. Yeah, quite good. Um, yeah, a bit spicy. Mm. Oh, quite spicy. And then obviously we've got the chapati here. Chapati bread. Dip it in the sauce. Put it in your mouth. Look at it all about. So we we'll just chill for a bit. And then head two more history okay all right guys finished the snacks gonna get back on the bike and we're gonna go to, you'll find out when we get there, I guess. <laughs> but I can tell you now, um, Sri Lakshmi Narasimha. Narasimha. Getting a bit confused why it says uh, Lakshmi Narasimha. So Narasimha is the fourth incarnation of Vishnu. Maybe I'll tell you more when we get there. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So that's who we're going to go see. So we are here at Lakshmi Namasimha. If I'm pronouncing that right, I'll get you there in a second. But you just, oh, you just missed them actually. Just going across there, with, there's like a whole herd of goats, like goat herders, with a herd of goats, as you do. Nice wall. Another nice wall with like some temples up on the top. 
I mean, literally everything's just temples, temples, temples everywhere. It's not quite like Bagan. So I've been to Bagan in Burma. This was well before when I was a young, well, when I was younger, <laughs> shall we say. Um, yeah, where you could literally, there was like thousands of temples. But, you know, this is, I mean, pretty, pretty impressive, to be honest. Like, I, I was definitely not expecting this. Okay, so we're just going to come up to the thing now. Looks like you can't get right up close to it. But once we get a bit closer, I'll show you. It is hot, I tell you. If I, if this is like the first time I've gone, hmm, maybe I need some sun cream. It's also the first time I've said, ah, the heat's not affecting me at all. So, you know. So here you can see, I mean, there's not much of the temple itself left. Um, this is obviously the temple grounds. Goes around, around, around. And then there is the big statue here. And then there is, you take your shoes off. I don't understand why people are taking their shoes off, but okay. So this is Badav, Badavlinga, Badavlinga, okay. So Badavlinga is located to the north of Lakshmi Nara Simha statue, which is the one around there that everybody is getting their photos taken with. This shrine contains a huge monolithic Shiva Linga. Now I've told you about Lingas before, Lingas are like phallic symbols for uh, something, not prosperity, the sexual one, I don't know. Anyway, monolithic Shiva Linga with a large circular pedestal or Yoni, which is the female counterpart, Yoni Pitha, drawing into a Pranala, an outlet, all measured about three meters in height. The shrine faces east and is built on a plain basement with a single projecting course. The walls are plain, above which rises the brick superstructure, which is now debilitated in a de de which is now in a debilitated condition. Oof, try say that. In the interior, cor corbelled ceilings with the central slabs missing can be observed. The lower part of the linga remains in water throughout the year. The source of the water is through a small canal drawn from the Tanga Brada Badra, Badra, Tanga Badra River. Oh, now we've got people here. Okay guys, so yeah, there we can see the linger, so that's the bit on the top, and then the yoni, which is kind of like the thing it sits on, and then down, ba -ba 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 -ba, you can see all the water, and see these three lines here, these three lines there, I do believe that represents Shiva, and you can actually see, I don't know if you'll be able to see, you zoom in a little bit, just at the top, you can see some eyes, so, Two eyes and then the third eye in the middle. Maybe you can see that, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's pretty amazing. What's that word? Fertility. That's the word. It's like prosperity but sexual. Got me? All right. And you see on top, you can see, so, I can't remember what they were saying over there, what I read, but you can see it's all this stuff on top. Red brick, but it's all kind of falling apart. That, that stuff, that red brick, that does remind me of uh, Bagan or even parts of Thailand as well. Obviously completely different. All right guys, if we can beat the sunshine, we'll see some stuff. Look at that. Yes. So, this is Ugra Narasimha or Lakshmi Narasimha. So I believe this is um, the fourth Avatar, or fourth incarnation of Vishnu. Um, also, the kind of consort, consort, shall we say, 
for Lakshmi was the consort of this guy. Uh, he's depicted here. They say with quite a um, devious looking face, but I see it. it's quite a happy looking one. It's supposed to be quite a daunting one to kind of show, I guess, the strength of this, this, this kingdom that was. Um, you can see it's a lion's face. There was originally um, actually a, a Lakshmi, which maybe you can still see the, uh, the hand, the arm is kind of there. So the Lakshmi um, was on his knee, but it has since uh, yeah, disintegrated. Um, behind, I think there is the serpent with kind of its, uh, what do you call it, like the, the thing open, like a cobra snake. So yeah, it's supposed to be kind of this um, symbol of power, I guess, for the for this empire that was. See, so yeah, Lakshmi Narasim. Ferocious, see, it's, it's ferocious. So he's shown here in like fear, the fierce form of Vishnu. Um, kind of as a, I guess, portraying him as in, in, in an act of defending against evil or, you know, protection over the empire or this kingdom, which was called Vijayanagara Empire, right? And it shows the, yeah, the emphasis and the devotion to Vishnu. That all makes sense. Lion, fierce lion, to protect this nation or this empire. Yes. Okay. It was, I was going to say born. It was made or consecrated in 1528. So that is, whoa, brain, almost 500 years ago. Whoa. That's an old tiger, an old lion. So the statue. Uh, which is actually the biggest statue here in Hampi is believed to be 22 feet or I think about 6.7 meters tall. Yes! There you go, there's all your info. Now let's uh, roll the b-roll. Okay. <laughs> There's a Krishna temple. I really wanted to film going because see there's this road here. Actually I'll film oh, no, my bike's over this side there. There's part of the road actually goes through the old temple or through the old like columns over there. Would have been nice, but I don't have the thing for the bike. Whoa! Uh, yeah, so next is Krishna. Krishna Krishna temple. Hari Hari Krishna Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hari Hari. I can't remember. I think I might have it in my bag, but oh, wow, look, there's like just temples, just, just everywhere. Temples and rocks and things. Let's go up this way. Bikes over there. All right, guys, we've just arrived at the Krishna temple. Hare Krishna. Here is the uh, Krishna Bazaar. I uh, probably won't take you down there because it's very similar to the Happy Bazaar. I think the hand of the guy bigger. It's bigger, better. I don't know. But this is the um, yeah Krishna temple or the temple devoted to Krishna. Wow, you can see like there's still quite a lot of intricacies which are still still around, right? All this stone carving. Turned out in here, and even down here. So, we are here. That's that side. Should we look at this side? A whole bunch of kids were uh, asking me before. I could tell that they were trying to get me to say something rude. Okay. They were nice to start with, but then they uh, got a little bit excited. Accidentally pushed my bike over after I'd locked it up. 
and they got shouted at by the guards. So I'm going to maybe try and stay away from them so they don't get too excited again. But check this out, guys. Whoa. This. This. Wow. So it's so well kept. Probably because it's got this big wall around it. Right? It's got the big wall around. Right around the outside. Which really keeps it. Um, I guess protected from, from the wind and the, the dust, wind, cloud stuff, which I guess acts kind of as sandpaper. Maybe yeah, I should get up. I don't know if I'm allowed to walk up here. But there's loads of footprints, so I imagine it's all right. But yeah, Krishna. Okay, maybe I'll tell you a little bit. Tell you a little bit, tell you a little bit. Right, ready? Dedicated to Lord Krishna, this temple complex is built from indigenous stone of the region, featuring intricate carvings that depict scenes from Hindu mythology, like we saw at the front, right? And also you can see it all along the side here. And I'll take you a bit closer in a bit. Oh, I can get down. See, so this is all Hindu mythology. Some of it. And you can see there was Lakshmi, uh, Hanuman, and a few others that I don't know. That's Hanumani. That's Ramayana. Ramayana? Maybe. The main temple, which is this one that I've kind of just got you pointed at, uh, has inside it, which we will see in a bit. Hang on. Of Bala Krishna, and is surrounded by a sprawling courtyard with a sacred tank. Okay. Unless this is sometimes filled with water. What is the sacred tank? But basically, this is the yeah, uh, kind of the craftsmanship or the like the intricacies of all the craft work and design speaks the religious fervor of the wealth of the Vijayanagara Empire. What do you think of that? Let's check this out. Namaskar. Acha. <laughs> People have still got shoes on there. It's interesting, you know, because some places you have to take shoes off, some places you don't. I guess because this is like ancient. You don't have to take your shoes off because it's not still in use. Well, he seems to be taking shoes off. Oh. Do we take shoes? Shoes off, yeah. Shoes off. I think we need yeah. shoes off. They don't, but maybe. Is it an example? Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, take your shoes off. Uh, but yeah, you, see, you can see here all the depictions. Yeah of Hindu mythology wow. like these you know they really act it's interesting I was, I was listening to something I can't remember what it was it was to do with language right and how we're how like hieroglyphs for example here these are you know, in some respects hieroglyphs but also the hieroglyphs of, of the Egyptians you can know, see here you know they tell a story they are a depiction of the story, of the words, right? Whereas now we obviously use the Roman, Greco-Roman alphabet, I think, in English anyway. Which, you know, is just symbols. It's just symbolic of whatever the thing is, you know, whereas things like this, you know, they tell a story. I don't know what the story is because I'm not learned in it, but I do know, for example, Again, but this is Hanuman, you can tell here because of the mouth and the tail. So, so that one I know. The rest, you know, I'm sure some people do know, but that one I've purposely learnt. Uh, this is obviously the Krishna temple, and um, it was built like in the 1500s ish by a king. One of the famous kings, King Krishna 
Diva Raya. Krishna Diva Raya. It looks like that's been closed up. So that would be probably the statue of Bali Krishna. I imagine. So this temple was actually built by the king to celebrate his win. Ah, look at it. See, I see it over here. Yeah, to celebrate his conquest of the region called Udayagiri. Right, so this is kind of in celebration of that. I see the, so this is also Hanuman. And maybe this is Rama. I'm not sure. Because Hanuman was the servant of Rama in the Ramayana. And you know, back then you could just imagine you know, the stone carvers just chiseling away at each bit. You know, and it does literally, you know, these, this will be uh, the guy we just saw. He looks familiar, doesn't he? What was his name? Especially his fourth one. <laughs> but yeah, you know, these, each column like, kind of just holds that knowledge, right? It holds knowledge, it holds insight. It, it's like a, it could be used to pass on ideas of spirituality, things like this. And there he is again. <laughs> now that I see him, I know what he looks like. But yeah, and it's not often actually you get to film inside the temple like this because the more modern ones they don't let you film uh, inside anyway. And I mean that's pretty cool. I've always, I've always liked Hindu temples even though I've, just because of the intricacies that they put into them. Even though I don't know much of the stories. Uh, yeah, if you guys know any like English books or books in English about uh, Hindu gods, I'd really be interested. Just because, yeah, I know they hold so much meaning and symbolism. You know, a lot like the Greek gods, which I know actually quite a lot about, because I've studied it for quite a while and read a lot of books about it. I've always been interested in that as well. Like I said, I always wanted to be an ar ar archaeologist. Okay. I think that's it for Krishna. Stand a bit more. We've got like loads of monkeys over here just hiding in the shade. I think they're alright. These black monkeys seem to like the ones with the black faces seem to be a lot more chill than the other ones. But unfortunately, and I thought it was, and I just I mixed it up a little bit. But you know how I was saying over here Krishna tank? The Krishna tank meaning I believe the water tank. So that's the Pushkarini of Krishna. Right, and the one of them, I'm, the one that I was actually looking for, which maybe we can still get to it, because it's kind of down near my place. Mm. Yeah, it was back over near the Lotus Mahal. I thought it was, but I put Push Karini in, and it told me this one in Google. Push Karani, Push Karani, okay, Push Karani. You put that into Google, and it might bring you here. The one that's like loads of steps. So this is a few steps. This all dried out though as well, you see. Um, there is another one called Pushkarani Kola with a K. Which is the one that I wanted to see. Okay. But still, pretty cool. All the monkeys. Check them out. Zoom in. See all the monkeys in there? No. 
and these ones are really chill. The other ones were pretty pretty ferocious to be honest. They were a bit of a hissy hissy hissy. But um, I think that's because they're really thirsty. They were like up on when we were up there last night. You know, they would see that I'd have a drink bottle and kind of like try and grab it off me. Which, you know, they're just trying to survive, I guess. <laughs> but these ones just seem chill, just in general. And obviously, with there not being any water here, hmm, you know, I don't know what they're going to do. It is very hot, like, like, what was it, 35 or something? Anyway, so this is, this is Kr Krishna Bazaar, right? And it's a bit smaller than the Hampi Bazaar. It was a bit more like falling down, but it's still pretty cool. And it's got this, I guess, like, you know, if it's raining, like that would be full. Cool. Um, might just sit here for a bit. I really need to go to the toilet, but I don't think I, I'm allowed to pee on the ruins, am I? I'm going to say no, just just to be safe. But I'll just sit here. We'll just chill out. Um, the time is 20 past 7. Uh, the Virupaksha Temple, which... Hello? Uh, the Virupaksha Temple, which is the one that's actually at the Hampi bus stand, which I kind of need to go to anyway, because I want to check and ask them about getting a bus to go. It's also where the Hampi Bazaar is, which we were at yesterday. That's open until 7 o'clock. Okay, so all the other sites are open till 6, and I believe, if Google was correct, that one's open till 7. And actually the Pushkarani, Pushkarani Cola uh, doesn't have a time on it. Now, I don't know if that means that it's open all the time, or if it's just they don't have a time there yet. Mm. Anyway, so I think our best bet, you and me, is we'll go to that temple I just said, the Virupaksha. 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 I'll get it, guys. Don't worry, I'll get it. I can get the pronunciation. Virupaksha. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This continues on the next vlog, so make sure you subscribe to find out what happens. And until then, keep on drifting.